recording studio today. Um, we are working on a, a music project with a friend, Mark Tarantini. Um, known Mark since I got to probably say the early 90s. We were in um, the huge wave of country rock bands and music scene that uh, just burst out in full force in the 90s and we uh, we had a great ride with that for many many years so I've known him since then and um, we jammed on stage quite a bit and we've actually did some a big concert of Garth Brooks music uh, with a I think it was like an eight-piece band and um, just got to know each other a bit more and uh, so basically, we have a like a possible future project. Um, we're trying to do a Dwight Yoakam kind of thing in the in the near future. We'll see how that pans out. Should be a lot of fun. Um, we'll see how it works out. That's it's always hard to get all the musicians in a band to do something like that. But uh, like I say, just a like a one-off thing, kind of a fun thing, like we did with this Garth Brooks tribute uh, music tribute. Anyways, so he threw me a 30, I think it was like a 30 second video of a song idea that he had come up with and asked if I would kind of see what I could do with it. So um, what I do with a lot of ideas like that that people send me is I kind of work them into like a four minute song with structure. So I took his video and cut and spliced it together put spaces in where I thought we'd have a lead break and and add out all this fun stuff as you can see um, doing the video cutting it up now I have to fill in the gaps so I'm filling the gaps with all these instruments um, I'm just gonna layer some guitar he's got guitar on the video I'm just gonna fill in some spots where I spliced it where I had to add some things where we're going to put a lead break and, you know, uh, um, basically stretch the song out from 30 seconds to four minutes long. And we'll throw a little bit of simple chicken picking song, or chicken picking guitar, I mean. And I love playing bass. We're going to add some banjo just for like a, um almost like a atmospheric simple pattern um that's kind of going to go in a couple of spots i don't want to bury this the thing through the whole song but maybe in a verse and definitely behind the lead and i might do something just as an outro and i thought about piano but there's a lot already going on but i might throw some organ in uh, under the uh under the lead maybe at parts they all fight for the same space on a frequency so you kind of have to watch how that plays out and in case you're wondering what this big orange thing is um this is actually just a simple amp box if you don't know what an amp box is normally you spend a fortune trying to make one of these i'm cheap so I kind of make a little soundproof booth just to capture the sound better on the guitar amp. Just when I'm screwing around, I, I you know, I use this box too. This with the soundproof foam. Sometimes I'll put it on the kick drum too, and you get a kind of get a more isolated bass drum sound. Um. I'm going to make this better. I just bought all this foam off a friend. Normally I, I put a um, a big heavy uh, moving movers blanket. Have you ever seen the one they wrap uh, furniture in? I'll have one of those. So normally I would bring it all over uh, the amp and everything. But because this amp is tube, I don't want it to get too hot. So I'm just doing this. It sounded good in the tests that I was doing. Um, so, 
And this is also my vocal booth. As you can see, it's got this little apparatus on the back. That actually connects to uh, a microphone stand. You just kind of slide it over, hooks in the top hole, that keeps it straight, and that clamps the bottom from stopping it from pivoting. It works great. To buy one of these things manufactured is like, you know, a couple hundred bucks or even more. So I like making stuff. It's a studio. It's not a fashion statement. If it works, it works. So, and this one, um, I don't think I'm doing any vocals on this song. Mark is quite an accomplished singer and he doesn't need me to do harmonies. But when I'm doing vocals, there's a couple of channels that I don't use. And I place it here. And I sit in my chair. And I bring that microphone over, the vocal mic. And then I put the lyrics up of any of the songs I'm writing up on the screen. So, and I basically just park right here. Put the microphone right here. And I sing into it and I can see the lyrics over top and I can control what I need to. I have the board set up. This is all drums right there on that big drum set. Everything is mic'd on that kit, um, except for that one tom, which the mic is on this amp. I have other mics, but I'm just lazy. I just grab one from there. It's, it's just a just a test for this song anyway um yeah so these are all drums and you go holy smokes that's a lot well it is but the bass drums alone um have three three mics on them they have one internal one external and then a sub kick and then times two for the kicks I mean, sometimes I use a cheater beater on the single kick. Um, saves a lot of grief. But I tune my bass drums to two different pitches. So when I'm doing my own stuff, I like to mic this bass drum. So that's six mics just for two bass drums. Right now, nothing is on that kick right now. Doing a country song. So, so these are channels I'm not using right now. As you can see, everything's based on left hand right hand so I have my bass guitar and vocal so when I'm doing my own vocal I have everything right here nice nice um, like it looks cluttered right now because I'm set up to do I'm on a uh, I'm on a time limit for because I, I'm it's funny I retired and I have I, I seem to be busier than I was when I was working but I, I record a lot of stuff and I want to keep going. I want to keep that, that flow going. So even when Mark asked me to do this, I had to squeeze it in to, to what I'm normally doing for time schedule. So, and I don't mind doing it because um, original music is, I just love doing it. So when somebody asked me, I'll try and fit them in just to, to help them out. I don't record for, I don't record bands down here. I don't do anything for other people. If I'm part of the, the the project, then sure, I definitely will help out. Uh, but it's always a time factor. Yeah, so I lay everything out um, when I'm working on a project. Uh, when it's something I have a little bit of, when I basically get to do a little of the creative side. Now this is this is just to. Um, um, get the song structured so mark has the idea and the lyric and 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 the, the some of the vocal stuff and he may alter that also but the whole point of this is to take his 30 second idea turn it into a four minute song with all the changes um and fill in the fill in the spaces that don't have anything and that's actually a lot of fun so my stuff, except for the bass and drums, we'll, we're going to be I'm going to be playing that on the final cut. Um, the guitar is all just filler. The banjo will probably go on there. That's totally up to Mark. But all my guitar parts are just uh, filler. 
uh, we have a, a way better guitar player to do the final product and um, I have no problem with that my my job is to at this point is just to help out make the song um, a four minute project um, do the structures and how the changes go and just to make it sound musical I come up with the, some leads and um, rhythm and rhythm patterns and stuff like that um, the banjo I, when I heard the 30 second idea almost instantly I, I heard a banjo kind of simple picking not nothing fast nothing bluegrassy just a nice rhythm picking part in certain parts so that's what my ears uh, kind of here so I've been playing around with some of this stuff already but uh, so we're going to record the parts now and see how it goes okay so we're gonna tinker in the studio here um, you're only going to hear the parts that I'm working on for um, the guitar lead and a bit of the outro. You're not going to hear any of the vocals because that's uh, that's a song in the process, and uh, we want you to buy the song if it ever gets onto a, a CD. So that's the whole point of this. You don't want to let out too much, but uh, the parts I'm working on uh, basically aren't going to affect that, but you're not going to hear any of the vocals and chorus and verse. It's okay. That's kind of a, a private thing until the song's all done. But until then, you can see the bits and pieces that I'm kind of currently working on. Yeah, so we're working on uh, just some lead stuff for uh, this kind of a project I'm working with with Mark Tarantini. And uh trying to work on a lead for uh this song. I call it tips of my fingers because that seems to be the part that repeats in the song. I don't think Mark has a title for the song yet, but uh, um, we're in the ballpark for structure. Like all my lead stuff is going to be replaced by a, a better guitar player than me, but I like fiddling around and doing some stuff. <laughs> in there lead breaks um, I'm kind of thinking you know if he plays it live he might have a steel player doing one and the lead guitar doing the other uh, I'm just doing two guitar leads so they might kind of overlap that's my idea anyways so we'll play along with the music and just see uh, see if this little ditty works um, so all this lead break was not in the the main idea that Mark sent me. Like say he had 30 seconds, so I had to kind of make it up myself. So what I did is I added uh, acoustic. Um, I have banjo, bass, drums. So I had to add all that myself. So we'll kind of see if this works. <laughs> Guitar's got 10 gauge on, so a little harder to bend. Mm -hmm. 
with another band like that. I'm playing it kind of subtle. I probably kind of wanted it in a Dwight Yoakam style and their guitar player is phenomenal. So, but uh, I think his name's Anderson. I could be wrong on that. Because this thing is sounds like the amp's in a sock. It's like you put a big giant sock <laughs> over the amp. But uh, when you're recording, when I record this guitar lead, um, it'll get a tighter sound in the mix. Um, but right now, like I say, I'm just working on parts. Gotta figure out the second half, so we'll try. That part's not too bad. So I kind of took a break from the lead, so I come up with the first part of the lead. Oh, it's quite settled on the second, but I uh, decided to work on the ending a bit. And so I added some guitars to it. So this is what we got so far. <laughs> some slight uh, noise issues in this and that's usually because of a plug-in um, so I'll have to find the culprit for that usually when I record I don't like having the plugins on but I'm kind of messing around here so, so I kind of want to put this little chord in like that along with those other guitar parts so there's two two parts that I'm doing I don't know if you can hear them we'll turn it up a little bit just so you get the gist of it I don't know how loud this amp is being in its little sponge box but <laughs> for these weird ending chords. I just love those. My rock songs have similar. Okay, so I'm going to try a picking pattern. Um, I'm not sure it's going to work, but it needs something else in there. Just to give it a little melody. I'm going to try this chord. I like weird chords and then vibratoing the chord. I must say, it's a little harder to do with 10 gauge strings though. My fingers are already hurting from this. Okay. <laughs> Dwight's got a little bit, Dwight Yoakam's music is a little bit, um, it's got a little blues 
and rockabilly in it. So you got to have these weird chords. That's what I like about Dwight. It's, he's country, but he throws that other taste in there too. Once my fingers kind of heal. Yeah, when did I do that? So that's a good idea. So I just got to go back to the uh, second half of the lead. Hey, I kind of figured out maybe a part. Wait. selection. <laughs> those notes a little more. play as hell but just because these strings okay let's try and get this mimosas screwing up I may have to beat it so it behaves uh, in the <laughs> The song is actually a half step down, so that throws me. Okay.
telly. Because this pickup gets in my way. And so does this one, just the way they're designed. Yeah, that works. We can play it. Play it properly. It's hard to mute the low string rumbling on there. Like I say, these are all just, they're going to be, they're not being used in the track because um, we have a, a far superior guitar player to do this. I just do this for fun. I could have just left all the rhythms and that would have been fine, but why not fill in the space with some practice, experimenting with uh, some leads? Didn't hurt. Kelly would have that kind of you can't tell because it's in the box but when you record it it's got that country spank <laughs> that I like anyways that works for the tail end of the uh, this there's two lead parts, so that works for the tail end of the uh, yeah, for the tail end of the second half. Vibrato that last note. Get that little harmonic happening. Oh, that sounds good. I like that. Okay. I don't know what to do about the other. I thought about like slide in it, but. because, I don't know, it might be a little too much. stuff you come up with your own ideas Oops. 
screwing around it's weird listening to the amp through this sponge box can't get the chimey notes but it comes through the speakers up front so it's a weird reaction Okay, that's it for now. My fingers are too sore. I got calluses, but still sore. Don't play this one too much. I like this guitar for doing slides, so and usually it's in a different tuning. This is a Mexican Strat, body-wise, all the guts, modified USA stuff inside, so I gutted it all and redid it, but it's got a pretty good. it for today or I should say the afternoon I'll finish it tonight and send it off to Mark and see how he likes it with his approval then we move on to redoing it all good all the drums and bass get redone to a perfect time because we were going off the time in the video that he sent me and he wasn't going to a click he was just kind of like having fun so meter fluctuates when you're just having fun so if we put it to a regular click um, I'll do some acoustic guitar like his pattern that he, he kind of wanted and I'll throw my own two cents in there and then the bass and drums will be added to the acoustic guitar I'll play originally to a click track we got a little drum beat click track and then um, we get uh, um, the guitar player Terry over 
to do all the guitar are good and then we'll have Mark over do the vocals and if Terry or I are needed for backing vocals will do it if not Mark's gonna do it I would imagine and they got a four minute song that's a lot of fun and got a Dwight feel which is kind of what we were looking for and that's the fun the beauty of writing songs somebody has an idea of 30 seconds and uh, gives it to a couple other people and we build this song it's fun super super fun it's time consuming but I should have all this done basically by the end of today and then either later tonight or tomorrow I'll send it off to Mark just for his approval on the structure like I say all, all the, the tinkering that I'm doing in there is not staying anyways I'll keep a copy of that for myself just because it's fun but uh, um, you know, basically we're going to make this better with uh, better musicians. So, as much as I play guitar, I know I I'm not a um, I'm not in the caliber of some of these guys that they come in and they can fire something off in five seconds. I kind of have to work hours at it, play around with it, you know, and make things work. But that's the beauty of songwriting. There's no time limit. Anyways, thanks for watching.